Welcome back to OATS Functional Test Automation video course. In the previous session, we have learned how to create a function library, why do we use a function library, and we have practically used in one of our scripts and then got an understanding over function library. Now, when we go into actual projects or implementing the test automation projects, we are asked to build scripts which are modular and can be reused so that one can easily build scripts crossing through the same functional areas and also maintenance will become more easy. The reason being if we have a modular approach even if there is a small change at one place we can update one of the functions in the function library that is how we create the modular scripts and it will reflect in all the scripts automatically. So now let's see how we can convert one of our recorded script into a functional library and how we can use it in form of a script. In the previous video sessions we have created a sample script by recording. Let's open the same. So this is a script which is created along with a object library and also a data bank but this is a recorded code. Now before we actually convert this recorded script into a function library and use it for creating a test automation script we need to see how we can break these individual steps into reusable functions. So if we see here we have one method which is like navigating to the website. The second one is clicking the register link and then we have a method or we, we can convert the other part as a method where we enter and submit the registration form. And then finally click on the confirmation page. So we can divide these into following functions like say we will create a new function library. Remember that it is not like you know you will have simple functions like add or multiply as we shown in the earlier video session. This is more about actually the UI interaction code. So in order to work with the UI, even that function library should have the object library because your recorded script is done with the help of a object library and not in the non-object library mode. So let us first create a function library. It will be web. I am naming it as mercury lib and I have to click create script as a function library click next this can be same as default click finish so now as I mentioned first we need to associate a object library so where is the object library let us see it is in this particular location ports online with object library. So now we are seeing that this particular object library can be used in multiple locations. Let us bring this out from the current script and create a folder called object libraries under our repository. I am naming it as OLS. So Mercury is the object library file here. Let us copy it into the OLS folder. Okay. So now go to OLS. We have Mercury properties. So we need to add this object library relative to a repository so that it will remain constant instead of as, as we 
brought it outside of the script and putting in a general location it is better to have a relative to repository now let's go to the library file function library assets object library add ols mercury i am giving it as relative to repository okay now we got the object library added let us now write four functions in this particular library public void navigate i'll be passing one url as a parameter so that we can use this parameter to launch the or we can navigate the launched browser to a particular url so i can just copy the code from here you don't need this 22 number and this becomes your variable url also as i mentioned earlier when we were creating the function library for simple functions like add and multiply we need not handle the exceptions but when we are actually working with the ui interaction related code we need to make sure that this code or the api which is of words should be either enclosed in try catch or you can write throws exception okay one method is done now let's look at clicking the register link public void click register it need not take any parameters so for this i am getting the code from here so this is how we can break a recorded script and convert into individual functions so that you can reuse these functions maybe in different scripts as well we have deleted that line because we are already using a navigate method here which navigates the browser to a specific url so here we will make a small change we will add a second parameter to wait for page the reason is sometimes the odes script might be slow but the actual browser may interact or load faster and then when we encounter a wait for page method on a web page on a window it will assume that the page is yet to be loaded but in cases if page is already loaded it might throw a error thinking that it is not loaded yet so for that we have to add this parameter called true so that it will detect if the page is already loaded and then it will not think wrongly that page is not yet loaded and it has to wait now once you wait for the previous page or you can move this to actually navigate method itself so that it will be more useful whenever you navigate it will wait for the page also to be loaded now what happens in click register you can click on the link and wait until the page is loaded so for waiting for the pages to load we generally use wait for page so if you see here uh, the first step is wait for page so we can take this and then keep it here so you can consider this as one of the best practice that you have to include true for the wait for page methods so we have created two methods 
and the next method is enter registration form so in this method we will enter all the details in the registration form we will not submit the form we will have another method for submitting the form there is a reason for this sometimes when we actually write our scripts we don't want the submit to happen every time what what we generally do is after entering the registration form details through the script we may want to validate some of the fields those are called field validations and then we will try to re-enter some other values and then we can again proceed for submitting so it is always good if you can divide entering and submitting the form as two different methods that will give you more modularity so now let us create the enter registration form method so pretty much uh, the entire code will come here I am removing these numbers. Okay, I have removed all the numbers. Here, if you see this particular method, it is actually inputting data into the registration form. So, we may want to pass these values as parameters. So, I will add some input parameters. So, now you can replace this with the actual input parameters of the method so now we have changed all the input parameters so that the data which is passed to this method can be directly inputted into the in registration form so now let's create the next method which is submit registration form So in this method we will submit and wait for the page to load so we have clicking on the register and then we should wait for the page to load So once this is submitted, we have to verify the success message public void verify. Register. Success message. So I'll be copying these three lines into this method. So now we have converted each section of this particular code into individual methods. Now we will create a script so that you know we can call these reusable methods and form a meaningful automation script. So I'll create a new script here. We call it as register user. It is always 
required to have browser dot launch in your initialize method so please do not forget and now in this run method we will be calling our function library methods but before that we have to add the function library script add and then i'll have mercury lib click ok we can use the methods now mercury lib dot navigate the url so you can give the url here So once we navigate, we will have to click on register link to launch the registration form. So we have click register. Okay, after this we have to enter the details. So if we remember in the previous sessions, we have had a data bank and then we were passing the data bank related values into the script. So similarly, what we can do, we can copy the data bank related code. This should always be your first statement in your run method as I explained earlier. And then these values should be replaced with this representation that is the data bank alias name and the column name. Now, but in register user, we do not have any data banks. So you have to first add the data bank. Let me just copy the data banks. We have data in this file. So I'll copy it to your script now. So this particular data bank is more relevant to the uh, script. So we can add it as related to current script. Add CSV file. And then we have the data. I'm changing it related to current script because I'm expecting this CSV file should be always present in my register user script. Cool. So now we have data bank and this function library. Now that we have added the data bank, we can use the representation to get the actual data. So here I can use This will be my last name. The next method call should be for submitting the registration form and then finally verify it. So Mercury lib dot submit. I'm pressing control space bar, which is called autocomplete. And then verify register success message. So for now, we are not actually giving the uh, message that you should come, but ideally this is how your script will be. So this is exactly same as what you have in your previous script. The only difference is we are now making it more modular script and we have divided into smaller methods so that you can use these methods in different other scenarios wherever required. So now what happens is, for example, I have entered some details and now I want to do some validations. So I can write those validations here. So instead, if I put this submit registration into this method, 
I would not be able to do the validations. And most of the times it is not good to have validations inside of a method. It should always be a separate method that you can call so that you will have more flexibility of calling different methods or different validations. So this is how we convert a recorded script into a modular script by first creating a function library where you can create reusable methods and those reusable methods are used in your script in the way you want. Let us now execute and see if we are able to achieve whatever we achieved earlier with the previous script. Clicking on all records, click OK. So looks like it's working. We did not break the actual functionality that we were able to do with the recorded script. It is the same what we are done earlier. I hope you have understood fair amount as how we have to break a script into reusable methods and how we can use that methods from the function library and create an automation script. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will dive into another concepts in the next videos.